I'm Jim Zelasco here with Doc Dogs TV, and I have the pleasure of being with um, three different representatives from three different countries here uh, for Doc Dogs. Uh, we have Robert over here from Doc Dogs UK. Hello. We have Farmer Dave here from Doc Dogs Australia. G'day. And of course, we have Grant Reeves, President and CEO of Doc Dogs, right here in the United States and covering Canada. I don't say good day or hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very exciting time, very exciting meeting, uh, because you may have seen things on Facebook or the web pages about Doc Dogs TV in the UK or in the Aust or in Australia. Uh, but you know, you never got to put a face or, or even know that it's anything more than just a web page. You know, I know for a few years there, I thought maybe you know Doc Dogs just bought a website and they put it up there, and you know they they were just basically planting their flag in those countries and well you know the rumor we just launched doc dogs uk and doc dogs australia so grant could have a free trip somewhere in the world so that was all it was we never did anything down there that was the rumor jim's trying to get there too on <laughs> doc dogs bucks <laughs> but anyway uh it is very exciting because there are actually uh we have all these individuals here today at this meeting uh to get these things ramped up and get them started because they're really going to start going full force and full bore here um we could start with robert here uh robert a, a little bit of background how did you get involved in the doc dogs by fluke. I met Grant on the first event, he had a sponsor. I turned up with a van for the sponsor. Grant didn't have anywhere to store the equipment. I volunteered myself. Grant crammed it all in my van and that's where it went from. Oh, really? <laughs> Fantastic. And how long ago was that? Uh, about four or five years ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. we've been doing events over there for four or five years. Yep. We're up to about ten events a year we right are. now and yep. it's going to grow. We're going to double it next year in the UK. Fantastic. And yeah, and I, I've seen that too. I, I, I've even seen some of the uh, UK people in the rankings. And uh, there's going to be world invites, I believe. Um, there has been world invites sent out there. We're just working through the politics of pet passports from the UK. Both these rock islands, I call them, are um, very, very stringent in the rules of, um, of uh, letting pets both leave and come into the country. But uh, we're working through those challenges and um, we're actually setting the... Uh, um, UK regional championship next year in uh, mid-April so that people have time to get to the 2013 world championship and their dogs by the way have gone from being 10 12 14 foot dogs I think what's your UK record right now yeah in bigger about 25 foot plus wow. so it, they're 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 coming along very well and we've, just, we've introduced speed retrieve over there too and now from I heard a rumor they have started EV over there on the sly that we don't know about we haven't officially introduced it but they're 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 starting to become you know competitively ranked in all divisions so the divisional format with regionals and worlds is going to be very big over there fantastic i think uh you know when the world becomes a true world more than just canada and the united states that we've seen in the past i think it's it's going to be so exciting we can touch that in a few minutes i have an idea i want to launch all right uh but we also want to talk to farmer dave here uh from australia and find out how you got involved in the doc dogs uh Similar way of getting, being roped in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Canadian works well on his lasso. Um, yeah, 2009 we had World Dog Games in Australia, which was a massive event, and I was one of the presenters there. Um, I've got a background in in working dogs coming from the outback, and uh, so they had me there telling people in the city how we live with our dogs and how we utilise dogs' natural instincts. And so I have a massive passion on utilising what a dog is born with and those innate things that, that he brings to the table not being wasted in the backyard or on the couch and getting a dog out there and doing something with all of those things that, you know, we as humans, uh, bringing those things out of the, the wolf genetics um, can actually utilize in a really, really fun way to, to right. get that bond happening. And, you know, since then it's just been a case of Doc Dogs is just doing this stuff and you check out things on Facebook, and you check out things on YouTube and you just think, you know what, this is, of all the dog sports out there, this is the one where you can just have so much fun and the dog's having an awesome time, the human's having an awesome time, and then anyone coming and watching is just going, this is fun. And when it comes to having a good time with your dog, I don't think there is a better sport. So um, after having a, a pretty bad accident doing search and rescue work, falling out of a, an aeroplane, um, I spent about, about 13,000 foot fall. I just got yeah, to qualify. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't it that was far. Yeah. It wasn't that far. It was only 13,000 feet. But, um, you know, I spent about five months um, in a wheelchair and started having a really good time with my dog and understanding a lot more about behavior and you know I'm a professional behaviorist back home and it really was a case of you can do things that are fun to train your dog and there's this subversive thing with dog dogs that you can actually train your dog in behavior and and get those obedience um, tactics whilst having fun so when I got out of the wheelchair and started working with people again 
again, this thing came up about, about dock dogs, that you can train your dog to sit, to stay, to calm down, to do all the things that you want, to be crate trained, to be able to travel whilst having fun. So what does crank train mean? Crank train. Crank train. You know, okay. put it in the I box. thought he said cranked. I'm, I'm still no, no, learning no. the lingo. I'm still learning the lingo. I was teasing these guys ahead of time. I was going to see if I had to subtitle any of this or not. Well, well the funny thing is, in the whole of the United States, I have to put on this really, really bad American accent, depending on where I am, how bad the accent gets. Let's hear it, let's hear it. No, I'm not going to. Oh, yeah, come on, come on, Say dark dogs in Australian slang and then say it in your American voice. Dark dogs. Dark dogs. There you go, dark dogs. Dark dogs. It's just, it, it kills me. But that's what I have to do to, to be understood in this country. So I'm sorry, but everyone who's watching this in the United States that has no idea what I'm saying, but, I apologize. But both your languages come from England, so you should be talking the country. Oh, here we go anyway. again. Uh, actually, if you think about it, we're sitting here, we have four different countries. We have UK and they're all colonies. Canada, <laughs> United States, or sorry, United States with Jim and Australia with you. I mean, and and and, and in short time, I and mean, we we only launched foreign countries in 0708, and we have two new countries we're going to next year. I mean, this is amazing, and and, and it's all based on what what both these guys have identified. They all have they they all have a doc uh, canine background, but it's on the fun. The core has been the fun, and and you know, unlike other canine activities. It is the most fun you have with your dog. I see it in every country. The, the one common thread is everybody's having a blast with their dogs. I mean, we've just done an event over at Norwich, all about dog show. I've just come from that last weekend. When I go back, I go up to the Robin Hood show. Back in October, we've got two back-to-back -back shows. And this weekend, we've just had 141 competitors go through the dock. Fantastic. And they're all brand new. Well, there were about 20 people who are regulars. The rest of them are all new competitors having a go. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to let you know why all these guys are here exactly. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching another edition. Hey, have of you Dark seen Dogs the new Dark Dog store online? Good thing dogs can't use computers because those new toys are awesome. All right, we're back, and we're going to find out why all these guys are here. Grant, why are we sitting here at Worldwide Headquarters in Medina, Ohio? Well, I live here, and, 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 <laughs> and actually, I've not been home a whole lot lately, so I'm glad that I'm home. Why are we sitting here with a gentleman from the UK and a gentleman from Australia? Um, I, I, as you know, Jim, I just got back from being over in the UK. Um, we've actually uh, relocated our head office in the UK into a wonderful place called uh, Lee on the Sea. Um, and it was right outside where um, the Olympic mountain park, uh, mountain bike course was. It's a phenomenal place. I actually was over there getting that situated. Um, we put a new management team in place to work with Robert over there. And part of our continuity and consistency is Robert has come over from the UK and we're going to train him. He's actually going to be out on the road for the next month with various different crews, getting down and dirty. Literally, he's going to be setting up, tearing down, getting wet, getting wet, showing some of the training techniques that that we use over here on the dock, running an event. He's going to be trained as an event manager and then he's going to take that knowledge back to his team. And and, and similar to that, Dave has been over here already for the past 3 weeks and some of the dock dogs um, you, uh, U.S. people have seen him and, and, and his associate Marion who are out here training and, and getting to know the, 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 the program on how we do it here through the head office and, and otherwise. So the continuity and the consistency worldwide and the goal for me is in every country the only variable is where the dock and pool set up and sometimes in their world it's always raining and in their <laughs> world it's always too hot but that would be the only variable. Here we have perfect climate you know so that's why they're actually here but that, that's, that's the goal is to Bring these guys, train them under our umbrella, show the, the show them the, the, the actual massive opportunity, and expose them to what it really can do. And these guys, I mean, they're he, you're charged up. I mean, you've oh, been to these events, awesome. and he's yep. he's flying, and he has already been working with the U.S. staff and, and seeing what's going on. So that for me, the long-term goal, truthfully, Jim, I think that our world championships can be exactly that, a true world champions. There's no reason why Dave and his team down there can't run up to 30, 40 events a year in that massive piece of rock that they have down there sitting in the ocean. There's enough population and a huge canine interest. 
and narrow it down to a November World Championships. And we feed their World Championships to our World Championships by satellite. And it's no different over there. You know, these guys have uh, 60 million people in the UK. Uh, I believe it's something somewhere upwards of 74, 75 percent people have dogs over there. Yeah, there's about six million dogs in the UK. I mean, it's 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 a massive amount of people in. No, that's in London. That's in London. It's huge, and and you put those people together by satellite feed in a divisional format, you're gonna have a true world championship. And Doc Dogs is one canine discipline that can actually lend itself well to that. Right. It's somewhere out in the distant future. I hope not too far, but that's my ultimate goal. Is it's you know the CEO of Doc Dogs Worldwide to have that camaraderie and I hope people get together Facebook through Doc Dogs, Twitter, the YouTube. I hope they start establishing online friendships and people helping these guys out and, and what what works for them up here can work for them and vice versa and these guys talking. And I really believe Doc Dogs has that vision as as a as a unit and this is your this is your team right here in the in the four countries we have right now. And and <laughs> and that's the thing is is in the dog world you are especially in Australia, you are contained to your own country because we can't transfer dogs easily because of our quarantine same as with yeah. Great Britain same as with New Zealand so this sport allows us to compete on a world scale and that's the coolest thing about doc dogs I think is as opposed to the other dog sports out there that if you're jumping somewhere in Sydney or somewhere on the Gold Coast you are competing against someone in Dubuque Iowa or Miami Florida the thing is everything is standard we have a standard pool size we have a standard dock size all the regulations are standard across the world and so someone jumping on Australia can compare someone jumping in America, can compare someone jumping in the UK, and there's a standard format. We're measuring all the same, same cameras, same crews. And so that's the big concession it that is. we've gone with imperial feet and inches. We haven't converted over to metric, and, and you know what, that's, that's cool. We you can got, give that concession. I, 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 wanna lose, I don't want to lose sight of something. Well, we all talk about the competition and comparing ourselves country to country on a worldwide scale. It's the camaraderie, it's the community, exactly. it's the culture. Yeah. It's got not, nowhere to go except up. I mean, we're, we're never look back. We're only looking forward. And, and think about how much fun we're going to have listening to the trials and tribulations of the Aussies and, and the Brits and them listening to the Canadians and the U.S. people. And we have these two new countries we're working diligently to go into next year. I mean, think about it. Just the experiences and social uh, dialogue I, back and forth. It's going to be hilarious. And the new breeds. I mean, these guys got breeds down there that we haven't even experienced. And while the Malinois and the Labs have been battling it out, what's coming from these countries? We <laughs> right. have no idea. It, it, it's unlimited. It's unlimited. No so. dingoes? Uh, we actually, you know what? We had a dingo actually at the dock the other day. Did you? Yes. He's very. <laughs> he, he was one of my co-stars in a, in a recent thing that I did, and uh, he didn't jump in, but... He was cool on the dock, and um, we'll foster, we'll foster it. But that would be awesome if you can get a dingo jumping on dock dogs. I think that's <laughs> that that's, would be that yeah. would be awesome.